You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Glad you're with us. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now, topping the list for us tonight. Tonight marks the final evening in Tennessee where abortions are legal. This after Roe v. Wade was overturned earlier this summer. Six on your side, reporter Paige Weeks joins us with information you need to know heading into tomorrow. Bo, a lot has happened since we saw the overturn of Roe v. Wade back in June. There's been protests and debates, as well as celebrations and victories. Here's what happens tomorrow. The law of the land will be that abortions are banned in Tennessee. This means that any doctor found to have performed an abortion can be prosecuted and could be imprisoned anywhere between three to six years. Here's the confusing part. Although some say there are exceptions for abortion, like when a woman's life is in danger, local attorney Greg Isaacs says there are no exceptions. The act provides it is an affirmative defense if the life of the mother was at issue when the abortion procedure was performed. So what does that mean? Uh, one, it's not an exception, uh, but two, if you're prosecuted, you can say it was a decision I had to make to save the life of my patient to uh, comply with my Hippocratic Oath. Um, but does it keep them from being prosecuted? No. We have a deeper look at what an affirmative defense is right now on WATE.com. Reporting in Knoxville, Paige Weeks, WATE, six on your side. Bo? All right, Paige, thank you. Coming up tonight at 11 o'clock, we're talking to local lawmakers about the changes happening at midnight. Next on the Big 7 today, President Biden announced a new plan to forgive student debt for millions of Americans, but not everyone will see their loans forgiven. This has been a long-term priority for a lot of Democrats, but the White House has resisted until now. The plan will forgive up to $10,000 worth of federal student loan debt per borrower, but only for people making less than $125,000 a year or up to $250,000 for a family. The amount of loan forgiveness goes up to $20,000 if your debt is from a Pell Grant. The plan also extends the pause on student loan repayment until January. That went into effect when the pandemic started and was set to expire at the end of this month. President Biden has been under intense pressure to help hard-hit borrowers, but Republicans and even some moderate Democrats question the fairness of this plan and why it's the government's responsibility to bail out borrowers who willingly entered into those loans. I don't know how we can afford it with a deficit spending. I think we need to look at the systemic problem that this is causing and try and look at the thing more holistically. As a former college professor, I know how onerous student debt can be and can very much influence what kind of investments you make as you set up your career and life. So, yes, I believe that we have to have some movement on this. Estimates say the nation's student debt stands around $1.6 trillion right now. Back here at home, we headed to UT's campus to get some firsthand reactions to the announcement today. This is the largest forgiveness for individual student debt ever, with senior officials saying it will help up to 432 million people. That relief is felt across Big Orange country. UT leadership says support for the students while in school will help them once they enter a postgraduate world. One of the things we're proud of here is that our student debt is below the national average. So anything to help our students, we're happy with that. Now, we also received a statement from UT President Randy Boyd saying that one of the school's primary goals is to, quote, work hard and help students graduate without debt. He continued by saying that the university has not seen a tuition increase in the last three years and how there are plans in place to help students and their families who make less than $60,000 a year through UT Promise. Next on our list, a trial is now set for Representative Glenn Cassida and his former Chief of Staff, Cade Cothran. As you likely remember, both were arrested yesterday by federal officials. Now, they are accused of using their jobs in the state legislature to funnel money to a political consulting firm they were secretly involved with. Both pleaded not guilty to charges, including theft and bribery. The trial is set for October 25th, with a pretrial conference set for October 14th. That pretrial could be used as a change of plea deadline. Both Cassidy and Catherine face up to 20 years in prison. Next now on our list for you, we're learning more about the death of two law enforcement officers killed in a helicopter crash near the Tennessee-Georgia border. We're told the helicopter crashed yesterday afternoon in a wooded area in Marion County, just west of Chattanooga. The copter clipped a power line and then crashed near a railroad. The two people on board have been identified as THP Sergeant Lee Russell and Matt Blansett. 
a Marion County Sheriff's Deputy and County Commissioner. We're told Sergeant Russell spent countless hours in the sky. He was a part of the Tennessee Highway Patrol Special Operations Unit where they would work on a variety of missions from the air. One of those missions was searching for Joe Clyde, also known as Baby Joe. Other law enforcement agencies had a close relationship with Russell, and when they say they needed help, he would not hesitate to give all he could to help out. Lee, you know, picked up the phone, called him on the way there and said, hey, we've got an armed guy running in the woods. And he said, I'll be right there. And uh, and he, he was here 45 minutes later and spent a pretty good long time, pretty good amount of time looking for him. FAA, along with the National Transportation Safety Board, have been called in to investigate the incident. Next on our list for you tonight, we are learning about a bus driver shortage that is impacting Knox County schools. A spokesperson for the school system says the county is short 35 bus drivers right now. Despite this, we're told KCS is still working to make sure every bus route is covered. That's in the short term. In the long term, Knox County Schools says it hopes a pay raise that went into effect for contractors over the summer will help retain drivers. Next now on the 7 today was the first day of class for students at the University of Tennessee. Rocky Top was bursting with energy all morning as we saw people out bright and early walking or biking to class. Now this year brought in a record number of students to the Knoxville campus. More than 8,000 students moved in last week, including more than 6,000 new students. We caught up with UT Chancellor Dondi Plowman on campus again today, and she says students are ready to go. First day of classes, I couldn't be more excited. I was out in the mountains this morning a little bit, checking with students. Are you on your way to class? Everyone's so excited and so happy to be back. To be here for the first time or to be most of the first time. We also spoke with several students about what they are looking forward to this semester. And the one thing everyone we spoke with was most excited for, cheering on the Vols this football season. Game one, by the way, a week from tomorrow when Tennessee hosts Ball State. Next on the Big 7, a sweet surprise for first year School of Architecture students as they arrived on campus today. Students received a historic gift from UT donors. Jeff and Marla Gerber have now committed $5.2 million to pay for the last dollar tuition and fees for all incoming architecture students this fall. And as an added bonus, that financial support will keep coming to help these students each year of their five years in the school. This will pay for everything after other scholarships and awards are applied. The Gerbers are also giving each student $3,700 this fall to cover the cost of the computer and related technology required for studies in the school. Well, today many Ukrainians would be celebrating their Independence Day, but instead, Ukraine's president is urging the public to be vigilant, warning that the holiday may bring heavier attacks on that country. February 24th of this year was the day that Russia officially invaded Ukraine. Many refugees have since made their way to the states and to East Tennessee. WAT6 on your side's Kristen Gallant spoke to one Ukrainian refugee and Carson Newman professor reflecting back on the past six months. Today is Ukraine's Independence Day, but instead of celebrating, many are still trying to seek refuge. The holiday commemorates Ukraine's 1991 Declaration of Independence from the then Soviet Union. However, Ukraine's president is urging the public to be vigilant, warning that the holiday may bring heavier attacks on the country. Meanwhile, many Ukrainians are continuing to flee, some making it here to the U.S. and East Tennessee. One is Carson Newman professor Dr. Vova. He was living in Ukraine when the invasion began. He was able to get his family out of the war zone, but he says he'll never forget the day his life changed forever. And exactly six months ago, uh, February 24th, every Ukrainian woke up knowing that it's like the second war, world war is happening. In terms of our future, it's still uncertain. Oh, of course, we can't help but check the news uh, several times a day and see what's happening uh, in Ukraine. Uh, we hope that Ukraine will retain its borders and we hope that life will be as normal in Ukraine one day. It doesn't look like it right now, you know, but that's our hope is, uh, where our hope is. Classes at Carson Newman started last week, along with being the assistant director of campus ministries. Professor Vova is teaching a class this semester on the New Testament. Reporting in Jefferson City, Kristen Gallant, WATE 6 on your side.